Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very, very excited to bring you a review for the new Transformers Legacy Walmart-exclusive Predacon Sandstorm. This toy is an homage to the classic BotCon exclusive Beast Wars toy that was released as part of the Reaching the Omega Point storyline. And Sandstorm, as now, was a recolor of the Scorponok figure of its day, you know, the Beast Wars Scorponok. And it represented a renowned Predacon general who was, in truth, a member of a group known as the Covenant, which actually predates the 13 Primes. Much lesser known group, but it does exist out there in the multiverse. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at Sandstorm's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll get a look at the instructions, and then we'll see Sandstorm himself in both Beast and Robot modes. Natch will be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Sandstorm comes in your mostly standard legacy packaging. However, you may notice something a little different. There's plastic on the window. Now this only appears to be the case for these Walmart exclusives. And when I say these, I mean three exclusives that were all released as one wave that are all Beast Wars related characters. We have Sandstorm. We have the original Predacon Buzzsaw, who like the classic one is a recolor, and in this case, slight retool of Waspinator. And then we get the Cheetor recolor Night Prowler, who is actually based on an unreleased Transformers Universe toy. Due to the fact that these all have, you know, beast modes and are Beast Wars adjacent, a lot of people have taken to calling these the Legacy Beasts, and I think it's a fitting name. Now, as far as we know, these are the only three Legacy toys that actually have a plastic window on their packaging. It could just be that, you know, these were already designed and set to be shipped, like, before that change was made. Or maybe it's a Walmart thing. Who knows? Uh, maybe the upcoming Velocitron collection will also have plastic windows. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Getting back to the packaging, however, you can see the figure right here behind the clear plastic window. You get some nice artwork of a scorpion mode here on the front. You get his name, all your branding. On this side, you get a close-up and faraway shot of Sandstorm's robot mode. You get his name in Ancient Autobot right there. And then on the back, you get renders of the toy in both Beast and Robot modes. He takes 24 steps to transform, just like Scorponok would. Now, one thing I want to point out here is it seems a lot of artistic license was taken with this new Sandstorm's design. For one, his colors have been pretty significantly altered from the original BotCon toy. His darker brown is pretty much spot on, but all this tan you see didn't exist on the old toy. The old toy's uh, secondary or primary color, depending on how you look at it, was much closer to the metallic grayish color used on the new uh, vintage reissue of the Beast Wars Scorponok toy. And I'll be sure to pull that guy out as reference during this video. So pretty significant change to the colors. If I had to guess why they did it, it's probably because that gray color is already so similar to the show accurate Scorponok toy that, you know, this guy is a retool of. And maybe they just thought it was a little too samey. They wanted to mix it up a bit. I will say the colors look good and are very fitting of a character named Sandstorm. But then, you know, the part of me that was hoping to kind of procure this as a replacement for the BotCon figure that I never owned, I was hoping for something closer to, you know, the original. On that note, we also see that he has been given a new head, which is based off of the mutant head of the original Scorponok toy. Now, in one way this is accurate to Sandstorm, in another it isn't. The original Sandstorm toy, being a recolor of Beast Wars Scorponok, naturally could assume, you know, the mutant head by closing those two little shell halves around his face. But in fiction, Sandstorm was actually shown to have a very uh, CGI TV show accurate head based on Scorponok's. So not only was he never shown to use his mutant head, but even his robot head was based much more closely off of Scorponok's CGI model rather than his toy. And that was, you know, in the comics, on the CGI render on his packaging. So because fictionally Sandstorm has never appeared with a mutant head, I really would have preferred if they just kept the standard robot mode head for him. We're still going to get a use out of this mutant head on the toy color Scorponok that's coming out as part of a Buzzworthy Bumblebee. So... In this case, I really would have preferred if they just kept the head, because to me it looks a little wrong to have this very different looking face on a familiar looking character. That's just me. I'm sure some people like having the mutant head. Personally, I think 
they should have just used it for the toy colors guy and left this one with the head that he's more recognizable with. Anyway, that little rant over, taken care of. Go ahead and turn to the side here. We see the Decepticon half of our legacy side panel art. And that pretty much covers it. So nice looking packaging, really stands out, especially because it has a window. Look how nice that is. I really miss these. I get it, the environment and cost cutting and all that. But man, I mean, look how much nicer the packaging is with a window. I mean, it's already bad enough they cut the windows like in half to where you only see the top half of the robot. But I gotta say, it does feel a lot fancier with that window there than just having an open, just gaping hole in the front of the package where like anyone can just reach in and touch this thing with the dirty hands, pop the head off or the tail stinger off or something. So yeah, it is a shame we've lost that. I mean, the plastic is recyclable. It's not like you can't recycle it, but oh well. Okay, now we see our instruction book for Sandstorm. Get his name, logos, all that. Get an updated render with the new head. We open this up. It shows you how to store his accessories inside of his claws. And then it just goes straight to the transformation. Okay, I'll show you once I pick this back up. So we see this on the back. We get the fully fleshed out Scorpion mode here. And then the same storage that we see in the robot mode. So everything you need, I mean, it's a fairly simple toy, not too many gimmicks, all his accessories just hide inside his claws so they don't do too much. But if you need instructions, he's got you covered. Now we get to see Sandstorm's beast mode, and I have to say it is very cool looking. Uh, some of the changes, as I mentioned, the grayish, dark brownish color has been replaced with this more sandy color. And the scorpion eyes went from being like a lime green to being red. Uh, personally, I wish they would have kept them green. I think they would have looked better with this, but I don't know, maybe they felt with them lightening his primary color that the green didn't stand out as well as it did against a darker backdrop. Maybe that's why they change it, who knows. Just like Scorponok, you can see his Predacon symbol here on his right arm. When we look inside his claws, you can see his Cyber Bee hanging out in there. I'll pull it out for a second. So you can see what that looks like. It's got metallic purple eyes and orange on the wings, similar to the orange used here on the mandibles for Sandstorm. And then on the side, we just get his um, missiles done up in a metallic purple, just like the eyes on the bee. I wish they would have used that same metallic purple for these details, um, because even though his legs and stinger and everything were purple, these are a bit too bright, a little too colorful for me. If they had been the same color as these missiles, I would have liked them a lot more. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. So I do think it's a good looking Scorpion mode, don't get me wrong. The sculpt was already pretty good for this mode and I do more or less like the colors, even if I do wish the purples were a bit more muted. And of course, we have to do a comparison shot with his Moldmate Scorpionok. So you can see very, very different color palettes between these two. In fact, the only place they have the same color in the same spot is the red on the eyes. Everything else is different. All the purples get replaced with red, the burnt orange gets replaced with purple, and in this case, the uh, mandibles go from orange to red, and his little arm details go from orange to yellow. So it's not a one-for-one -one swap, which is good. You don't want them to be just a plain like palette swap of each other, because that's never very exciting. But I think they both do their own thing just very, very well. You have one scorpion that looks like it would you know, be at home in a desert setting which is fitting for a guy named Sandstorm. And then you have another that might be, you know, in a more wooded area or something, somewhere where darker color palette would help it survive. Uh, let's go ahead and compare those accessories. So you can see his Cyber Bee is done up in the same dark gray as his body, has metallic purple wings and red eyes. So different colorations used there, which is cool. And then the missiles on him are, I think they are purple plastic painted red. So same red paint they see in the mandibles there. So I like that. Again, not just straight palette swaps. They are mixing things up a bit, which is always really nice. And I think uh, for both these characters, their strong point is the Scorpion mode. Like, it looks fantastic. It's not screen accurate, or even Beast Wars toy accurate, which had a much less realistic looking Scorpion head, more uh, cartoony looking than anything. I mean, these two just look phenomenal as realistic looking Scorpions. So I do have to give them that. And now we get to have a good look at Sandstorm's robot mode. 
And as we saw in the packaging, he does come with his mutant head instead of the regular show based Scorbinock head. And just like with the beast mode, they changed the lime green eyes to red, which, I mean, I mean it looks okay. I just wish I would have kept it. All right, there we get to see his bee again, getting ready to be launched out, or his missiles, which look very cool. I love that metallic purple there. Really nice. Uh, kind of harkens back to the metallic blues of the original um, Scorbinock toy. So overall, he looks cool. Um, you guys, if you've seen my review on the Kingdom Scorpionok, you already know how I feel about this mold and its robot mode. I do have some major issues with it. One, the character of Scorpionok, he is one of the shorter Predacons, but not that short. Like this guy is roughly comparable in height to like the cliff jumper mold from Earthrise. So pretty darn small, right? Like very small character. And then, not only is his scale off, he has these really, really short, undersized looking legs for his rather large torso. And it just gives him these very bizarre proportions that make him look far, far less menacing than the original Scorpionok or Sandstorm toy. Uh, makes him almost look like just a bit of a joke, like a grunt. So, I do have a lot of issues with the way that this mold turned out. And unfortunately, I think the problem is even more exacerbated on Sandstorm, because Sandstorm, whereas Scorpionok was more or less a comic relief character in the show, Sandstorm is a very serious character. He is supposed to be a big deal, right? Like, he is one of the Covenant. He is Scorpius. And as such, he's not a small character. If you look at his in-fiction appearances, uh, they basically judged his scale off of the original Mega Class toy, you know? So he wasn't a little guy. He was actually quite big and imposing which makes sense for, you know, a well-respected, powerful general. Them using this mold for a Sandstorm toy really just diminishes him down to somebody that, like, would look very strange commanding an army of big, hulking Predacons, you know? So, I don't know. I guess they just decided to make him, like, very Napoleonic. Though I shouldn't even say that, because contrary to popular belief, Napoleon wasn't really very short at all. It was just propaganda to make him look ridiculous. <laughs> He's actually a very average height guy. Uh, but, you know, there's still always that funny image of, like, tiny little Napoleon leading armies, and that's the vibe I get from this guy. So, yeah, uh, honestly, if they were going to do a Sandstorm and Legacy, I know it would be very unorthodox. I'd prefer if they just used the Beast Wars Scorpionok mold again. I mean, they already have the mold, right? They just reissued Beast Wars Scorpionok, and even though they probably charge about the same for him, about 40, 40 something dollars, I'd rather pay that and get a really cool, imposing looking Sandstorm than get a little tiny shrunken down one. So, if it were up to me, I'd rather see that, because the Beast Wars Scorpionok toy really holds up well compared to modern toys. It does have a major issue with kind of having a bit of a hair trigger for its little, you know, launching bee gimmick, but that can be tweaked. That can actually be fixed. And then really the only thing you have to do to get him up to like modern posability standards is just retool some ankle tilt in there, which is not even a must, right? I think plenty of people would just be happy to get that cool toy, even if it doesn't have the ankle tilt. Because I just personally think it's a better toy overall. Now some people may not like that idea because, you know, if you own the original Sandstorm, you probably want it to hold its value and you don't want it to be directly reissued. Well then fine, reissue it, but give it this color scheme, right? Change it up like they did with the Beast Wars reissue of Scorpionok. Change something about it to where it's not the exact same toy so that people that have the original don't feel like their value is diminished. I would rather have that than this tiny little thing. It's just, it's really unfortunate, All right? Putting that rant aside about how I feel about the mold, I will say that with the colors and everything, it does look nice. I think his colors work better than Scorpionok's, which, you know, I'll take a closer look at that in a moment. And I do like the mutant head, even if I don't think it's appropriate because the character fictionally never had the mutant head. It does look really good, and they have recreated it very, very well. So, you know, despite my feelings on it, I'm still happy to have this, right? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, oh, it's so bad, it's the worst ever. Like, no, it's still really, really cool that we're getting a Beast Wars Sandstorm toy after all these years, right? Like, that was not a character I ever thought we were going to see again because he's very obscure, you know, BotCon. It wasn't um, it wasn't as big of a convention back then, right? It didn't have uh, probably the, the wide appeal that like later BotCon, like when Fun Pub uh, took it over. It was a little more niche and, you know, had less exclusives. So Sandstorm is probably under a lot of people's radar. 
Uh, if you're a big Beast Wars fan, you've been following it a while, maybe not. So to get this guy again is kind of like a dream come true. It's not ideal, but it is better than nothing. Kind of like with the uh, T-Rex toy, right, that we got as a Target exclusive. Not ideal, not even close to ideal. I actually think that one was far more poorly executed than this. But it's better than just never getting one, especially if you missed out on the first. And here again is our Kingdom Scorponok for a comparison. Now one of the other things I didn't like about this Scorponok toy, aside from the molding, is I always felt the purple was far, far too bright for the character. Right, when this very bright purple is paired against this very dark gray, it seems, you know, out of place. Seems like it clashes a bit. And it's actually much brighter than even his purple. Honestly, if they took his shade and put it on this Scorponok, it would look a lot better. That's one of the things I never really liked about the Scorponok is that his colors seem to clash a lot more than they should. And it's not the colors themselves, it's the shading used. Some are just far too bright to be going against, you know, the darker colors on this guy. Like the grays and reds are phenomenal. The purple, and even the gold used, which is more of like a mustard yellow, it's just a bit too bright. So that's, you know, one of the other things I didn't like about this toy. This guy, I feel, doesn't really have that issue. Even though I wish his purples were a little darker, they don't necessarily clash because they're dark enough to not feel cartoonish against his other colors. So, personally, I do very much like this use of the mold more than this one. And I know I keep mentioning him a lot, so here is the Beast Wars Scorponok toy. Specifically the reissue. Sadly, as I said, I don't have the original Sandstorm, though I may actually be willing to give up a kidney to get that one. Uh, so, he'll have to work as a stand-in for, you know, kind of a mold update comparison. So, you see what I, what I mean about the size, right? Like, this is how big Sandstorm is supposed to be. He was not depicted as a small character. He was supposed to look big and cool like this guy. So... Again, I really would have preferred them use this mold. Even though it's not a modern mold, and it's outdated, and it would be more expensive, it would have been so much cooler. It's just something that really bothers me, because this is such a cool toy. I also wanted to pull them out so you can see how the mutant head here compares to the original. And I'd say they really nailed it. Uh, one of the issues I've seen with the like Kingdom or Legacy recreations of mutant heads is that a lot of the time they're very squished in compared to the original. And that's because, you know, they have to be able to fit inside of like a chest cavity or something. And there's not really the clearance to make them, you know, one for one proportionally compared to the original Beast Wars toy. Here, he does not have that issue. If anything, his snout actually extends further out than the original one. You can see that. And looks pretty much the same, maybe even a little bit better. So I think in this case, he's one of those rare examples where... The updated mutant head is at least as good as the original. So that's something I find very, very cool personally. And doing this comparison shot here really has me wondering what this would look like with these colors. If somebody out there wants to do like a little digi bash and show it off, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Because I think it could work, even though it'd be inaccurate to the original toy, I would rather have new colors on the old mold than using this mold. But that's just me. And I want to do one more group shot here because I brought him up and I wanted to kind of show off what happened. So this is our Kingdom T-Rex, Target exclusive. And these two, they're very interesting. So they're both exclusive recolors hearkening back to exclusive recolors of previous toys, right? And they both, interestingly, have had their primary colors, like of their robot mode, swapped around. The original T-Rex had a very tan coloration to his metallic parts, whereas the original Sandstorm had a more gray coloration, and they've basically swapped. And I find that so weird. I, I don't know why it was done on either of these two. Now we've already looked at the possibility that maybe they just changed his primary color so it is, doesn't look too much like Scorponok, which, you know, maybe. But I've never been able to figure out why they went from tan to this like really dark gray here on T-Rex. I don't get it. Like, honestly, both of these two would look far more accurate to their original appearance if you swap their primary colors. Like, they would both just be absolute banger updates if that was the case. But they didn't do that for whatever reason. We'll probably never know why that was. But I just want to show them together because they're both falling into this really interesting category of, like, mysterious recolors. 
And this completes our look at the new Walmart exclusive Legacy Sandstorm. Despite the you know decent amount of criticism I've thrown at this thing, I am very happy this toy exists. Like, don't get me wrong there. Uh, as somebody who has held the original Bakon Sandstorm up as a grail, I'm very happy to get some version of this character. And I'm happy that he hasn't been completely forgotten and that he's finally getting some sort of acknowledgement outside of Botcon. Because I don't think, like, outside of, you know, the Botcon toy and the comic that was centered around it, right, reaching the Omega Point, has he ever been acknowledged again after that in any official capacity? Because I don't think he has. I don't even think he was in the the source book. I could be wrong. Maybe he was in the source book. Um, but, you know, finally seeing a Beast Wars Sandstorm toy popping up after all these years is really cool, regardless of my qualms with the mold, and the weird, you know, choices, the, you know, the color changes and all that, it's still really cool to have. And out of the three new Walmart beasts that we're getting, he's the one I was most excited to pick up, which is admittedly why I reviewed him first. So I think he's the coolest one, right? He is based off of a very highly wanted BotCon figure. And, you know, he really does spruce up an otherwise very boring and unimpressive mold because I think his colors just work so, so much better for this mold. And I'm very happy to get him, even if he is a bit of a short stuff and he's, you know, got like weird polio legs. He is something that I'm very happy to add to my collection. Of course, that is just how I feel about this toy. So now I want to know what you all think of him. Is Sandstorm a toy you're looking forward to picking up? Do you have any attachment to the character? Are you old enough to, you know, remember the original? And, you know, is it something you've wanted ever since? Or maybe this toy might not do it for you because you're just some obscure repaint. You don't really care for him. Maybe you'll like the way the colors came out. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Transformers Legacy Walmart exclusive Predacon Sandstorm. And with all that said, I will see you next time.